Life Church. We are in Los Angeles. We're at the Mosaic Conference. I'm with our friend Erwin McManus, who will be our guest for our men's conference coming up October the 13th and 14th. And man, I just want to encourage you, actually 12th and 13th, but I want to encourage you to get signed up for the men's conference. It's so significant. And just a quick uh, story here. Um, before I introduce our great speaker, this sign behind me, Jesus Saves. So much history here. Go to my Facebook, and uh, I did a recording on the history of this sign in Los Angeles. But I want to just say this to you, Jesus saves. And Jesus is going to save today. Save in the Greek means sozo. It's spelled in English, S-O-Z-O. And it means he delivers us. He makes us whole. He doesn't just heal us, but he makes us whole. And I'm so excited today because there's a man that's going to present the word of God that I believe is one of the greatest vessels of honor to the glory of God on the face of the earth today. He's using every part of himself to deliver this good news, this gospel, that God loves you, that God is for you, that God is on your side, and that is Nick Butchick. I'm so excited about him being with us today. I want you to stand on your feet, and I want you to give a great Elevate Life welcome to our dear brother, our dear friend, Nick Butchick. Nick, we love you very much. God bless you from L.A. Jesus, say Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much for the welcome. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for the welcome. You may be seated. Pastor Keith, Pastor Sheila, thank you so much for having me here. Give Keith a big hug and a kiss for me. He'll be here tonight. That's awesome. All right, I'll hug and kiss him myself. I, uh, I want to tell you all that it's such a privilege to be back twice in one year, uh, back to this church. I want to thank you so much for your prayers, your love and support. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, thanks for praying for my family. Um, during the, the, the first half of this year, it was a little bit difficult uh, with my dad going home uh, because of cancer. But we know that uh, my dad and anyone who knows that heaven is real, we're just citizens of heaven passing through. Amen. But thank you so much for keeping us in prayer and, and in your hearts. And we're so excited about um, working with Elevate Life Church over the coming years, especially with the youth. We really want to, and, 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 and praying, we want to see God open up the doors of middle schools and high schools here in Frisco and the greater area here to see more young people come to Jesus as well. And so pray for that. We're really, really excited. And uh, I've got a couple photos for you. We've actually got three. We've got my family and then a big crowd I want to talk to you about and then hopefully the photo of the tent. So we have right here um, a family photo. First of all, can I just see with a show of hands, who's never heard me speak face to face? Raise your hand. Let me just see you. Awesome. Awesome. Nice to see you. And put your hand up if this is your first time to this church. Let me see your hands. Awesome. Welcome to Elevate Life Church. You're welcome here. Hello to everyone watching online. We have a photo of um, me and my wife. She's incredible, the most incredible human being on planet Earth, Kanae. She's half Japanese, half Mexican, Japsican. And um, <laughs> we have two boys, Kiyoshi, who's four and a half, and Dayan, who's two. Kiyoshi's in your child class right here, and he loves Jesus with all his heart. We're so thankful. And um, unfortunately, my wife's not here because she's pregnant. Uh, and she's actually pregnant with twin identical girls coming in December. So, I tell you, Jesus loves my wife more than me. I know that for sure. Because when we were discussing about children and how many children we were going to have, I told her, I'm done with two. Two boys, their hands full, right? And uh, for me, I, uh, I, I was asked by her, well, how many children do you want? And I said, two. I said, how many children do you want? She's like, I'm not done with two. And I'm like, well, how many do you want? She's like, well, it depends. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, my palms are getting sweaty. And she says, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, well, we're going to try another one and have, you know, a third child. I said, well, she said, well, if, if it's a boy, then we're good. I'm like, okay, phew, well, what if it's a girl? Well, she needs a sister. So there you go. God provided our daughter with a sister. Jesus loves my wife so much. Um, and uh, she sends her love and greetings. I also want to share with you um, a big crowd photo. This was last Sunday um, when anyone prays for life without limbs, 
that video now needs to be updated. We have well over gone one million souls for Jesus Christ because, and that video was just updated like three weeks ago, but, but that photo is 800,000 people in Ukraine. For as far as you can see, the crowd actually goes around that corner. 800,000 people heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Half of them repented and gave their life to Jesus right there and then 400,000 plus Millions of people watched live on TV, 26 countries, 20 different languages. And so we're just so, so blessed that as you pray for Life That Limbs, as you support us, uh, we, we go to places where not many people can go. And by the grace of God, more people are coming to the redemptive power of Jesus. So thank you so much and praise God for that. Amen. And finally, I think we have a photo of the tent uh, I didn't bring it up on the other services. Great. This is one-sixth of the tent. Uh, the full tent fits 8,000 people. This is 1,000 chairs. Uh, Going to be preaching in that tent 14 nights in a row starting October 23 to see 14,000 people hear the gospel of Jesus Christ in California. And then God willing, next spring, that whole tent will be pitched up 14 nights in a row to 100,000 people in Santa Barbara, California. Uh, please pray for us. Pray for the outreach there. And I tell you, we're praying for America. We, we want to see a million people gathering for the name of Jesus uh, in Mexico because of especially the, the earthquake. We pray that, that the government would open up the door there soon. I've been to Mexico 30 times, sometimes on a motivational level, but really it, it's ripe for a million people there. And we're praying for America that many, many cities would have filled city step halls of a million people here in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need Jesus in this country like never before. Amen. So we're so blessed. We're so thankful. And if you have heard me speak in January, can I just actually see a, a quick show of hands? Who saw me in January here? Awesome. Put your hands down. I hope that God refreshes your spirit, even though you know my story already. Um, we know that over the last three services here, Friday night, Saturday night, 9 a.m., uh, 180 just gave their life to Jesus here at the front. So thank God for that. Many visitors come through the church and... Um, I'm just going to be trusting in God that even if you heard me in January, that there'll be some fresh things that you've never heard before. Um, Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 is the scripture I want to open up with. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Everyone say all your heart. Now, in an Australian accent, everyone say heart. Very good. <laughs> I'm just joking. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all of your ways, and He will direct your paths. You know, my parents always taught me to acknowledge God and be thankful for all the blessings because every good gift comes from God. Many people don't believe in the love of God because of the pain that we see in the world. But we know that the Bible says that God is not the person going around the earth like a roaring lion seeking to devour, kill, and destroy. We know that God is real and so is the devil. We know that that is the devil. We know that there is no sickness, disease, or death that was caused by God. It was caused by sin. And it's all in here, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. We also know, though, that there are many people who are suffering all around the world. So my parents always taught me, Nick, don't forget about the poorer people who don't have food. And that's why we also thank God for the food that we eat. However, it's very hard for a child to believe that God is a loving God when you're born this way and you see everyone else. And, you know, I've learned how to deal with, uh, you know, people stares at me and, and especially the children. You know, the children come up and they're like, what happened? I tell them cigarettes. Um, <laughs> I free people from the car, you know, people see my head from the outside of the car, all they see is my head, I just freak them out like this, and I do a 360 <laughs> like this. We dressed me up as a pilot, greeted the passengers on the plane, and one day when I went to Indonesia, you know the, the, the baggage carousel, you know where, where it goes into a hole in the wall and you don't know where, what happens after that? I went through that black hole and uh, gave people heart attacks on the other side. Um, 
I can cause some trouble in airports because no one's going to handcuff me, right? And uh, I don't leave any fingerprints behind either, right? Uh, but, but really, in our travels, um, we've been able to see just an incredible faithfulness of God to know that there are many people that I've met face to face that, that they've hit a wall of impossible, And that word, impossible, 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 impossible. We look back at my life. I mean, we look at the doctors, uh, you know, who saw me. And when I was born, without warning, I was born this way. And my parents weren't ready for my, you know, little surprise greeting kind of thing. And and now my my mom and dad, they, they look back at my life and they're like, that's incredible. For a man without arms and legs to be God's hands and feet that goes to 17 presidents and prime ministers and 10 governments and preaching to millions of people. You know, uh, God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And, and what that means is when, when it doesn't make sense in your head to have peace, when it doesn't make sense in your head that God is still in control, when it doesn't make sense in your head that, well, where is God, that God is still faithful, and the beautiful thing is that His strength is made perfect in your weakness. You know that I'm just like you. It's not my positivity. It's not my strength. It's not my nothing. It's because by the grace of God, I have unstoppable faith in the unstoppable one and true living God who can do the impossible. Amen? He can do the impossible. And as a kid, I prayed for arms and legs, and today I have a pair of shoes in my closet just in case it says yes. Um, But I've seen 13 miracles right in front of me, blind people seeing, deaf people hearing, crooked backs come straight, even in my own back. I, at 19 years old, the year that I started ministry 15 years ago, I I went to the doctor and I was having like a pinching uh, of my spine, a couple nerves, and I couldn't feel my hands for a couple days. And... um, (laughs) I, I got, a, got an MRI scan and came out, and the doctor came out with the results, and he says, well, I, I've got some bad news. I said, okay. And he said, you were born with a rare disease. <laughs> I know. He said, no, you were born with a syrinx, which is a degenerative disease in your spinal column where your bone of your spine will actually turn into nothing. Uh, we will have to brace you up in, um, with metal rods, with screws, and you will basically be in bed by age 40, 45 years old, unable to move. And I'm like, thanks. We prayed, and he told me that we couldn't do anything. We can't reverse it. We can't slow it down. Uh, when you look it up, it's, it's medically uh, irreversible, um, impossible. Everyone say impossible. impossible. Yeah. Ten years later, though, I got a, 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 a checkup, and I didn't have three holes in my spine. I had two, and the doctor's like, hmm. And I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> two years after that, one hole. November 2015, no holes. And the, and you know, of course, we prayed for my dad who had cancer. I prayed for my cousin Roy. When I was six, he was 27. He was dying of bowel cancer. And I pleaded to God. I said, God, don't take Roy. You know, keep Roy here on earth. Heal him in Jesus' name. And we had faith. But God took him home. You see, we know that our earth... Life here, our our temporary life, it is actually temporary. Yeah, we are citizens of heaven passing through. And as we know that there is no hope after death except for the reverse of death, which is resurrection, which was only done by one person, who that one person said he was God, God in the flesh, and not just flesh, but God in the flesh. It's the only way he could do something that men cannot do. He was holy, which then proved that he was God as well, because not one man was perfect. And he did face the devil face to face, face to face, and won, and conquered sin and death. And when you know that we are just, this is just a piece of flesh dying, 
but my soul lives forever. We are made up by body, mind, and soul, and spirit. And we got to understand that it's got nothing to do with our bodies. And we can pray for a miracle. Like I've prayed for arms and legs, and I prayed for my dad to be healed. We know, though, that God has a plan. And He will not take my dad one minute earlier or later than His perfect will. And when you have that faith and you really believe what you believe, it changes you. It's not about your strength, not about your intellect or how much money is in the bank and you trying to figure out your life. It's about God's plan and trusting in the Lord with all your heart. Do you trust in the Lord with all your heart? Is Jesus living in you or is He just a part of your life? Some of us carry Jesus in our back pocket like an app and we text Him when we kind of need Him. And then we kind of draw closer to Him in the, in the times of need and then when things are going good, we feel pretty good. No, we need to understand that a personal walk with Jesus is walking step by step by step. When we're walking alone, away from the Word of God, our sinful nature takes us away from what God really has for us. And when you realize it's just the devil and his demons, let me tell you why I'm an atheist. Not because I've seen miracles, but because I've seen demons. When you can feel that 10 foot tall, 4 foot wide demon on the other side of the wall while he's walking through the wall in my San Francisco hotel room, when you see the, the dark side, baby, you ain't atheist after that. And I've seen miracle after miracle, and it's not just that my story is more important than anyone else. Now I'm going to share with you a couple stories today of people along the way that God did the impossible, that God is real. When we turn away from the powers of darkness and stop listening to those lies, you say, you know what, to the devil, I'm a child of God. I'm not a kid with no arms and legs. I'm an ambassador of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And greater is he who is in me than anything and anyone in the world. Amen. God's grace is sufficient. You know, when you read Psalm 23, I love it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And when you know that hope is more than a change of body, some of you teenagers, I wish I was more pretty, I wish I was more tall, I wish I was more popular. You know, the guys that start saying the F word to be cool, they, you know, make their biceps really big. Man, my biceps were so big they fell off, you understand me? <laughs> and then people, we become intellectual, right? Like after college now, now we know more, right? We knew that age 13, we knew, we knew that we knew everything. But then when you're after college, now you know more, right? And you get out of college and you look at everyone else and people giving you advice in your life and you're like, well, you're pretty messed up just like me, so why should I listen to you? And then we figure it out, you know, our own life and our own path and if I can just get here, then I'll be happy. And for me, in my life, I wanted arms and legs. I was in want because my soul, my soul was not restored. And that's why people gather to, as, a, as a family of God. You're my brother, you're my sister. God is our father. You see my body? I'm your half-brother. And you know that deep down, it's more than just the mind. It's more than just planning. It's more than intellect because you will fail you sometimes. You may fail your family sometimes. People and family and friends may fail you sometimes. And even when you fail God, God never fails you. And you realize pretty quickly that you sometimes get what you want, but then you figure out it's not what you need. Did I really need arms and legs? No. My dad is in a better place. I need peace, purpose, life, unconditional love, forgiveness of my sins. Forget about arms and legs. I was carrying a thousand pounds of shame and guilt every day of my life for all of my sins. Talk about a disability. But when you walk by faith and not by sight and you put a G-O in front of the word disabled, it spells God is abled to do what? to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever ask, imagine, or attain. He is good. And all things come together for the good for those who love Him. And when you know that your soul is restored, your focus isn't here on earth, your focus is on heaven, and all you want to do is love God and help others know that Jesus loves them too. But not just to be someone 
you know, Jesus as a person, someone just, you know, once a week that you talk to. You know, there's a, a really cool illustration. There was um, a guy on, this is a made-up story. Um, a guy was, was on the uh, first story of his two-story home, and he's watching TV. And he hears a very loud bang on the door. Bang, bang, bang! And he's like, who's that? And he gets up off of his seat and he goes to the front door and he opens it and he sees a very evil looking person. He says, who are you? He said, hello, my name is the devil and I've come here to steal, kill and destroy. And without one second warning, he grabs this guy, picks him up, throws him against the wall, punches him up, blood's coming out, cracking his ribs, kicking him like crazy. And then the devil goes to every single room of that house and destroys everything and comes over and leans over him and says, I'll be back. The guy's shaking like, he, what just happened? And all of a sudden, a very kind-faced man comes to the door. And he says, hello, my name is Jesus. I'm the son of God and I'm a healer and I can heal you and fix this up and I'll redeem you and I'll, I'll protect you from that other guy, the devil. Oh, he knows who I am and we've met before. Let me in your house. I will help you. I'll protect you and I'll heal you. And I want to live with you. I want to talk with you. I want to be your best friend. I want to help you know that my ways are better than yours and my strength is greater than yours. Will you let me in? Yes, come into my heart. Yes, God, come live with me. And he heals the guy and he fixes up the house and now the guy feels pretty good. Now Jesus says, well, do you want to go to the basement? He's like, oh, I don't know, Jesus, if you're going to want to see what's down there. I, I don't think you're going to approve with every area of my life. You know, some of you teenagers think that you're a Christian just because you come to church on Sunday and then you go to school on Monday and you tease and gossip and tear down people with words. I doubt if you really know the love of God. I doubt if you really ask God to help you with every decision. I'm not asking you if you're perfect. Just ask my wife, am I perfect? No, I'm not. But you, when you turn away from the lies, you don't want to live in sin. And you realize that God's love is unconditional and He loves you even when you are a sinner, when you do have sin, despite your addictions, despite your failures, no sin can separate you from the love of God. But when you ask God into your life and you turn away from those ways and, and you don't want to live in sin and you turn away and you say, I am a child of God. God, help me. Lord, give me your peace guide me teach me to pray show me how to live God help me to live the best way you want me to live and God I know I need your strength that's when you're living with him day by day hand in hand but some of us have Jesus in our house like a guest and you know what happens when you have a guest in your house when someone comes knocking on your door who opens the door your guest or you you and this man says, Jesus, come upstairs. There's a room just for you. Jesus is like, well, I don't want to be your guest. I want to live with you. I want, to, I want to talk with you. I want to be your friend. I'm more than a ritual. I'm more than a religion. I'm real. And I want to help you in every area of your life. I want to protect you. Sorry, Jesus. Ah, just if you don't mind. And so Jesus goes up in the room and then he sits down and he feels pretty good. And all of a sudden he hears another bang, bang, bang on the door. He's like, it's the devil. And he gets up slowly. He's like, all right, I'm ready this time. If it's the devil, if I open up a little bit and I see his eye, I'm going to smash that door right in his face. He thinks that he's stronger than the devil. He opens it up just a little bit. And the devil, boom, busts open the door, picks him up, throws him against the wall, beats him up, kicks him, goes to every room in the house except where the room where Jesus was. And he comes back and he says, I told you I'd come back. And he leaves again. This guy's shaking and he finally gets up the stairs and crying and weeping, Jesus, where were you? I thought you were good. I thought that things would be better. Well, you're not living with me. You haven't given me the key to the house. When you realize it's not about this place on earth, this flesh, and the moment where you say, yes, God, come. I want your plan. Guide me. Get into that driver's seat. I don't want to drive anymore. 
because your wisdom and your plan and strength is greater than mine. I need you. Heal me. Then the guy said, okay, Jesus, here's the key to my house. I'm yours. I'm not living for me anymore. I'm living with you, for you, because this life is so short. And everything that we could ever have on this planet, money, drugs, sex, alcohol, pornography, fame, and fortune. If you put your happiness in temporary things, your happiness will be temporary. And you might be a good dad. You might be a good father. You, you might be a good husband. You might do good on earth. But being good is not enough. It's not enough. It doesn't satisfy our soul. But when you find the truth, the truth sets you free. And the guy gives Jesus the key to his house. And now they're sitting down on the couch and they're reading the Bible together and talking. And all of a sudden they hear a bang, bang, bang on the door. It's like, it's the devil. Wait a second. Jesus is in the house. Jesus, military style, gets up off his seat. He goes, whoop, whoop, whoop. Boom, boom. And the guy's like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen, right? <laughs> Jesus boldly opens that door. <laughs> Jesus sees the devil and the devil sees Jesus. The devil falls to his knees and says, sorry, I've knocked on the wrong door. And when Jesus is living in you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. When you have found something to live for, you have found something to die for. And in 2002, at age 19, I went to Indonesia for the very first time, and we took a DVD, or 2003, a DVD recording of my preaching, and we went there, and I spoke six nights in a row to about, I don't know, 80,000 people over six, seven nights. If you know anything about Indonesia, that's not always easy to do in a country like that. And so we were able to do that, and we're so thankful for the harvest of souls that came in, tens of thousands. It was amazing. And for us, we just were excited. But then what happened? We got an email when we came back, and I got an email to say, if Nick ever comes back to this country, we're going to kill him. And what was really amazing was obviously we don't put us in danger where we are not really welcome, but really when you are where God wants you to be, there's no safer place to be. God called us back two, three years later, and we went back to Indonesia, and the same thing happened again, but this time we got an email from that same person, but the email was a little bit different. He came there to kill me, and he confessed that. But he said, but Jesus got a hold of my heart and I gave my life to him instead. <laughs> Unbelievable. Impossible. Everyone say impossible. impossible. God does the impossible. Amen. And during the Sunday when I was there, I was speaking four times in the morning, three times at night. We went to a Chinese restaurant to go eat. And it's really funny when I walk into a public place with my caregiver, when I have no wheelchair, that, you know, because the steps are everywhere. He kind of just carries me and we look like a, 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 like a Siamese twin kind of pair. You know, like I'm facing this way, he's facing that way. And he's carrying me in and we're just laughing at everyone. And they're like, whoa, you know. Uh, we sat down in the VIP section and, and we sat down with about 10 or 11 people, pastors there in Indonesia uh, and the team that brought us there. And as soon as we sat down, we're looking at that menu, and I saw a 17-year-old girl, 18-year-old girl come to the door, Indonesian girl. And she's weeping and weeping and weeping and weeping. For three minutes, she's trying to talk. She can't talk. Then she finally talks, and then the people at my table started crying. I'm like, can someone tell me what's going on? They said, Nick, this woman is called Esther. She grew up and lived all of her life on a trash dump with her family in a house very small made of cardboard, cardboard and wood and tin and sheet metal. And they would pick up plastics on the trash dump and pick up the plastics and sell it back to the recycling plant. And that's how they got enough rice to survive. 
Her biggest asset and precious thing that she ever had was her family. And then when her mom and dad divorced, she felt like her life was over. She got so angry at God. God, how could you do this? Do you know that the 50% of the people in my life that actually don't believe in God, 50% of it is because they have pain in their life or they've witnessed pain and they say, if God is a God of love, then why is there famine? Why is there pain? So she fell into that category at that moment as well. She said, God, you're not real. And even if you're real, you've got some explaining to do. She wrote goodbye letters to all of her family. And she decided that on Monday she's going to commit suicide. She said, but God, I'm going to go back to church one more time, one last time. And she sits in the very back pew all alone. And what I want you to know is in 2002, 2003, we brought in the DVD of me preaching. And when I came back in 2005, my coordinator said, Nick, you need to forgive the Indonesian people. I said, why forgive the Indonesian people? What do you mean? He said, Nick, I'm so sorry, but we have black marketed your DVD. (laughs) Now, if you're younger than 15 years old, you have no idea what I just told you. You don't know what it means to burn a DVD. (laughs) I'm sorry, but we used to copy movies and DVDs before the internet really kicked in, okay? And they say you really made it when you're black marketed back then, all right? He said, the DVDs are everywhere. And I said, that's awesome. He said, you're not angry? I said, no, I don't care. But people made a lot of money off you. I said, don't worry about it. Praise God, the gospel's preached. Esther, in the back row, sees the pastor come up on stage, the priest. And he says, well, congregation, I'm not speaking today, but I want you to watch something. And he sits back down. Guess what they put on screen? The black marketed DVD of Nick Vujicic preaching the gospel of Jesus. And she is looking at me and weeping and weeping and weeping, watching me on screen. And she said, God, forgive me. Forgive me. You don't owe me a thing. You are good. And you cause all things to come together for the good for those who love you. And if this limbless man trusts you, then I'm going to trust you. If you can take this limbless brokenness that he had in his heart and his broken pieces and did something beautiful with his broken pieces, you're going to do something beautiful in my life and my broken pieces. If you can use him to be your hands and feet, then you're going to use me to be your hands and feet. And she said, come into my life and I'll, I'll serve you for the rest of my days. And she prayed for a job. You know how hard it is to get a job in Indonesia? The average person, if they have a job, they work 18 hours a day for about $1 a day just to survive. Those Christians who work that much actually go to the 1 a.m. service because they can't go during the day because of their job. It is hard in Indonesia, just like many countries in the world. And guess what? She prayed and fasted for six months for a job. And guess which job she happened to land on? By the grace of God, an eight-hour train ride away from her home, all alone, she became a waitress in the restaurant that I happened to walk into. Luck, chance, or coincidence? You got to be kidding me. Come on. We know God ordained it. And she came in there, and I said, wow. I said, so... So you live around here? She says, I sleep on this floor. I said, excuse me? She said, I sleep on this floor. And I'm thinking, man, I didn't even want to eat here. I saw a cockroach just as I was walking in. I'm like, she sleeps here. And I'm looking at all the other waiters. I'm thinking, just imagine what other employees or employers are actually abusing her maybe to manipulate her and pressure her to do something. I was just like going through my mind. I'm like, I'm so sorry that you sleep here. She says, yes, I work 18 hours a day. I said, what do you want to do in your life? She said, I want to be a youth pastor. She said, but it's impossible. (laughs) Have you used that word before? I said, why is it impossible? She said, well, first of all, I need money. I don't have money. I'm like, okay, I can I can understand that, and I know God has provided for things before, but she went on. She said, but you don't understand. I need to work to get money just to survive. I have no savings. It doesn't make sense, and I need to work 18 hours a day. I can't support myself. She said, 
And also, there is only one Bible college that's suitable for something like that. And there's a 12-month waiting list to then sit down for a theological exam. And if you get 100%, not 99%, 100%, then you go into the first of three rounds of interviews, and then maybe two years from now, I'll get in, even if I had the money. And I'm like, whoa, that's pretty, what? Impossible. And all of a sudden, I lost my appetite. I'm looking at my plate full of food. And I'm looking at the pastors that are chomping away. And then they stop and they realize I'm not eating. I said, are you okay? I said, I just don't like that she's on the floor. Yeah, we realize you didn't like that. And then one guy across the table looks at me and he does this. I'm like, what's he smiling at? Like, he says, hey, I'm the pastor of the church that you just preached at, and we just have a couple uh, new apartments that we finished building that are not leased out yet. Walking distance from here, if you sponsor her lease, we'll give her her own apartment. I'm like, are you serious? Like, that is awesome. That's miraculous. I said, how much is it? And he told me how much it was. I'm like, Easy, done. It was so cheap, I could pay three years of rent right there and then from my wallet in their own currency. It was nuts. So cheap. I'm like, okay, God, that's cool. I'm thinking, but how's she going to become a youth pastor? All of a sudden, I look up. There's another guy across the other side of the table, and he's like, <laughs> I'm like, why is he smiling? He said, everything that she said about the Bible college is absolutely true. It's pretty impossible. He said, but... I'm the president of the Bible college. <laughs> and he said, if you sponsor her and if you want, she can get right in, no 12-month waiting list. She can sit that exam this Thursday, and if she gets 100% and you pay for it, she'll be in. I'm like, oh, awesome. She came in the door. And I said, today, you're not sleeping on the floor. We have an apartment for you. She's like, what? I said, and this is the president of the Bible college. And she's like, what? And this Thursday, you're going to be sitting that exam. She said, what? I said, if you get 100% on that exam, you got a three-year scholarship all the way to be a youth pastor at the Bible college. She fell to her knees, wept. Buji to Han, Buji to Han, to Han member Kati, to Han member Kati. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. She didn't hug me. She didn't look at me. She didn't look at anybody else. She knew that was her heavenly Father smiling upon her, seeing that God can do the impossible. Hallelujah. Guess what was her first job? to be the number two oversight of all the youth in a church with 10,000 youth. She's now starting an orphanage in a couple years that we'll hopefully help her out with. Man, look at her. Look at what God did for so many people in the Bible. Look at His faithfulness. It's us who lose sight of the goodness of God sometimes. And it's easy to do that. It's also easy when things are going good to let the good and excellent things of earth distract you from the most important. Amen? Aaron, if you can play keys, that would be great, please. I'd play keys, but I'm not warmed up yet. <laughs> I want to ask you today, are you quite done yet taking the responsibility and the burden of answering the door? Are you quite done yet trying to figure out that season of life where you can kind of do this? <sighs> you know, I heard someone say that ministry should be easy and I... I can't, dis I, can't, I can't agree with that. There are many stories of how ministry was very difficult for people. I've seen it with my own face. Seen them. How hard it is sometimes to be in ministry. Life is never promised to be easy. But 
But he promises that he'll be with you. He'll give you exactly what you need. His grace is sufficient. Then he'll never leave you. He'll give you enough strength for the day. And as we eat food, we need to eat spiritual food to understand that we are a spirit and soul that is eternal with attacks from every side. And even when it's difficult, Jesus is still faithful. And you can believe in the impossible because nothing is impossible for him to do. 30% of the friends that I have who don't believe in Jesus, they say, well, I can't just believe that it's that easy to just receive God as my Savior. Yeah, it wasn't easy for Jesus. He was shaking and trembling in the garden before they came and took him away. I don't know if you've sweat out of fear, but Jesus sweat blood out of fear. He knew what was coming. And it's not about, well, how can one sin take me to hell? No. How can I ever believe that me with sin could ever be accepted into perfection of heaven? How could God, before I'm even sorry, send His only Son to pay for the sins of me? You see, sin brought death. Jesus had no sin, so He didn't have to die. But He chose to die on the cross. And that cruel death paid the price for my sin. And when someone pays something for me, then I don't have to pay for it. You buy me a movie ticket, I don't have to pay for my movie ticket. You pay for my speeding fine, I don't have to pay my speeding fine and I'm free. But someone with no sin, the only person, read it up, research it. Look at all the philosophies, look at all the thoughts about life. Life and death. Some people believe in reincarnation. I can't believe that. I don't even have fingerprints for this life. How did you track me down from my previous life? And I'm not putting other religions down, but when you speak in front of 600 sex slaves who are 17 years old, who were kidnapped at 10 years old, sometimes sold by their own mother for $700, you can't tell them to be positive. You can't tell them reincarnation, better luck next time. In fact, don't be a Christian just because of Christians. Be a Christian because of what Jesus said, what He did, and what the Word says. When you look at these girls... You can't tell them to be many other religions. Look up all the other philosophies and religions in the world and see which ones actually redeem them and take their shame and take their condemnation. You want to know when you were redeemed? When you can talk about the previous way that you used to live, but you know you're not that person anymore and you're a brand new person, fully forgiven by God and every sin He forgets. It's easy to receive something. It's another thing to be giving or preparing that gift. But Nick, God knows my sin. How can He love me still? Well, I saw that night a woman who was paralyzed and who walked, and I didn't know who she was. She was the one who was the evil woman who started human trafficking in Mumbai, India. I met her in 2008. We prayed for her to walk. She hadn't walked for four and a half years, and God healed her, and she walked for the first time. She gave her life to Jesus then two weeks later, and I found out later that night, though, what happened and who she really was. She was the one who actually started human trafficking in Mumbai, India in the 1960s. She is the one who the, were the, was the operator and manager of all the operations of 250 homes with six girls in each home. Over the years, 40,000 slaves she was solely responsible for. Talk about evil. Yet God healed her, reached her, transformed her, and forgave every sin because she was sincerely sorry and believed that Jesus is Lord. Do you believe that Jesus is Lord, my friends? Do you have Him in your life? Is He your everything? Starting that journey with Jesus, and that journey with Jesus starts with a prayer. 
to say, yes, God, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I repent. I don't want to live in sin anymore. I know I'm not going to be perfect. You give your life to Jesus today. You spill out the F-bomb next week. You ain't going to hell. Do you understand me? He's not waiting for you to trip and fall and zap you with lightning. But turn away from these lies and take one step with Jesus. And it's no longer I that lives, but Christ in me. There are some things and habits that may come along with you for part of that journey. But as He renews your mind and changes your heart, maybe you've come to church for years. Maybe you've been hurt by Christians. That doesn't take away the fact that Jesus is still Lord. I love where God says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Find Jesus today and give him the keys to your life. Won't always be easy, but he'll be with you every step of the way. Because the God that we serve is the God of the impossible. So right now, from the front to the very back, I want to give you an opportunity to respond with a prayer. And I want to lead you in that prayer that is your first step in your faith journey with Jesus Christ. And in a moment, I'm going to get you to come forward and just stand on the floor. And I'm going to pray a prayer with you. Why do I get you up here? Because if you can't stand up for a faith decision here, in a moment like this, in a building like this, if you cannot stand up for your faith in here, how do you expect to stand up for your faith out there? You don't have to be worried. As you come up, I'm not going to lay hands on you or anything. <laughs> but over the last three services, 180 people have come forward. And maybe this is the day of the salvation of your soul. Where you can say, you know what? I may be hit on every side, but I'm never going to be destroyed. Because my God is with me. And He's going to heal my heart, transform me, take care of my depression, take care of my afflictions, take care of my enemies. Not me, Lord, anymore. You. Some of you teenagers think that you're on a fence. There's no fence. You're either living for God or not. Some of you older men, my brothers, it's time. You're getting older. We're all getting older, aren't we? Tomorrow's not promised for anyone. But for the sake of you and your family, will you make your life right with God? Are you quite done yet trying to figure it out? So right now, I'd like to invite you right now that if you know you need to make your life right with Jesus, don't wait for the first person. Be the first person. I want you to grab your things. If you know God's knocking on the door of your heart, it's His kindness that leads us to saying, sorry, I repent. You've heard the kind voice of God. Answer the call. Answer the door. And let Him in. So right now, if you grab your things, stand up and come on down. When you see someone move, I want you to clap as an offering of glory to God for people making their life right with Jesus. Let's all stand to your feet so people don't have to jump over you, especially if you're at the folding chairs. Back up just a little bit so people can pass by. Come on, right now, all across this place, if you know that you need to make your life right with Jesus, put one foot in front of the other. He will rescue you. He'll redeem you. He'll set you free. He'll give you the strength that you need, the discernment. He has a plan for you, a plan impossible to do in your strength, a peace impossible that the world can ever give. He has a peace and a joy and a love for you. Come as you are. Stop trying to fix yourself. Come as you are. Stop waiting. Stop thinking about it. Put one foot in front of the other right now. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. His people are still coming down. Trust in the Lord with all your heart.
That's 93-ish up the front. 93. I believe we might be... It's just a good guess, but I think we're going to wait for another 45, so I'm going to wait. There's one. Can you turn up the lights just a little bit so I can see a little bit the house a bit more better? That's two more. Thank you. We're going to wait for 45. You know, if you're thinking of thinking of it, this today is a special day. This is a holy moment. And maybe, maybe... Maybe you want to come up here, but you don't want to come alone. If you're somebody today to say, you know, I want to go up there, but I don't want to go alone. Here's the trick. Turn to the person next to you and say, here's the trick. Right? If you want to come up here, you know you need to say this prayer. Here's the trick. Turn to the person next to you and say, hey, I want to go up there. I want to give my life to Jesus. Enough is enough. I need to surrender my life to Him. Will you come up with me? I don't want to go alone. Will you come with me? They'll say, certainly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Come on down. Twelve. Come from the very back, very top. Come on down. Keep applauding if you see someone coming down. Come on, there's another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last call, final call, nine. Fear not. Move right now. Last call. Move. Move. Praise God. Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for your love. We give you praise and all the honor and all the glory goes to you. Father, we thank you for what you've done and reminded us that you're a good God and a God of the impossible. We thank you in Jesus' name that we can come before you and ask you for anything because all things are possible. Yet God, help us with faith to trust in you with all of our heart and to not lean upon what we see or what we think or what we hear, but Lord, what we know from your word. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. You are a merciful God. You are a forgiving God, a God that transforms, redeems, and fully heals. Father, we thank you that you hear our prayers. We pray right now in the name of Jesus for every prayer request. Lord, whatever prayer request we have, we uplift that in the name of Jesus, but especially those who are suffering, Lord God, physically. We pray for physical miraculous healings all across this place. Those watching online, physical miraculous healings all in the name of Jesus. We pray for them right now in the name of Jesus be healed. But Lord, greater than a physical miracle is the miracle of knowing you. And we thank you and give you all the glory for the people up the front who are starting their faith journey with you. If you're up the front, please repeat after me. Say, Dear God, I come to you today and I thank you for your love, for your plans. Thank you, God, that you love me just the way I am. But help me to see from this day on how I can live for you, to know you. Come into my life. Forgive me of everything I've done wrong. Thank you, God, that you do forgive and you forget my sin. Help me to forgive myself and trust in you. Change me. Jesus, be my Savior. Be my friend. Thank you for the cross. 
and thank you for heaven. Holy Spirit, comfort me. Give me peace, strength, faith to know that you're with me and you'll never leave me. Bless my family. Help me to love them. Help me to pray for them every day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give God a shout of glory. Those of you who are up the front, I just want you to look at me. Everyone else, if you're at a seat, have a seat so we can actually see how many people are up the front. There are at least 160 people up the front, 150 people. Let's give God a shout of praise. Amen. If you were watching at home, please email the church. We'd love to connect with you. We want to connect with you. What we want you to know is this church loves you no matter what. If you need groceries, this church will give you groceries. If you don't have a safe place to go home tonight, this church will do all that we can to make sure that you're protected. Do you understand? We love you you just the way that you are you need counseling great we'll give it to you for free and it's all biblically based it's so much more than intellect it's the spirit of god that now lives in you and one day at a time he gives you brothers and sisters in this church to help you with every step of the way no matter how good you feel today right now that you might actually wake up tomorrow morning and say okay what do i do now i said that prayer what's the next steps we as a church, our responsibility is to be committed to your commitment to Jesus Christ. To answer any questions as best as we can. We're not going to pretend that we know all the answers, but we'll, we'll, we'll tell you right now. We promise that nothing you'll ever tell us will ever change what we think of you. And we love you. Just like God loves you. And every step of the way, we want to meet you where you're at. Remember, I'm your half-brother. All right, We're a family now family cares for each other when they're a loving family maybe you've never had a loving family maybe you never had a father you know what the bible says about that god is the father to the fatherless and he'll redeem you so be patient as god works in you one step at a time in that daily journey with god you should have received a little packet i want you to pick up that packet and put your hand up if you did not receive a packet as you came up and oh, it's really important that you get a packet at least one per family. There's a couple up here. Keep your hand up until someone gives you a packet. I want you to grab that pen and I want you to pull out that contact card. Let me tell you what we're doing here. Now, we're never going to press you to do something you don't want to do, okay? But really, as a, as a commitment from us, we want to know how do we pray for you? How can we help you? Can we invite you back to church? Can we pray for your family? Maybe your family needs some specific prayers. We want to stand by you and your family for their breakthroughs as well. And the reason why we'd like you to fill out that card is so that we can call you, we can email you and help you to know, okay, how do you really now get back into a church or the family of God and learn how to read the Bible and feel free to ask questions. And maybe it's a Bible study. Maybe it's just coming back every week. Maybe it's you also knowing the next steps as far as baptism and what is baptism we'll never force you to do something you don't want to do but we want you to know that that god loves you this is the beginning we want to help you with the next step so right now take a minute grab that card out of that uh, uh packet and start filling out the contact details that you feel comfortable to give us we'd love to see you you should have all received a packet uh, would you like one as well yeah can we have one right here anyone else who did not get one please fill it out and from the front, someone will grab that card in a moment. Pastor Sheila, can you please come up on stage? Well, we're so proud of you guys and this decision that you've made. You know, all of us at some place have come to this place in our life where we've either we did it for the first time or we are stepping up saying, you know what, I'm recommitting again. So no matter where you are today in your journey, you know, sometimes we just have to step up again and say, you know what, I'm recommitting again because maybe I've fallen away and I just want to just, just answer the call. Because you know what it says in God's Word? 
that he stands at the door and knocks. That's what he was doing today. That's how you ended up here. Jesus was knocking on the door of your heart. And all you did was open yourself up to him. And that's all he wants is you just to remain open. We're not perfect. None of us are. I don't care how long you've walked with God. You're not perfect. We have to continually go back to Jesus and say, I've fallen short. I've sinned. Please forgive me. And so don't beat yourself up, just like Nick was saying, because none of us are perfect. And I'm going to tell you, I'm so proud of you. I see the tears. You are precious in God's sight, and He loves you. He's got a great plan for your life. And it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. You know what? There's a great life ahead for all of you. And so we're just so thrilled for all of you that have made this decision. But we want to make sure that we have that record of you making that decision, that you've got it dated. You know this was the day that God did something new in my heart and my life. I will never forget this man that stood on this stage and from this day forward, my life forever changed. Aren't you glad that Nick came to Elevate Life Church today? That your life was touched? Yes, we have been so blessed. Just like he talked about, we all have broken pieces. And many of us are broken. And you know what? It's easy for us to see that in Nick where he doesn't have arms and legs. But you know what? It's no different for us. There's broken pieces on the inside of all of us. And that's why we need a Savior who loves us. He loves us unconditionally. And he has a great plan for all of us. And so um, what I want to do is just make sure that we get everybody's cards. So if you'll just hold them up in the air so somebody can come by and grab those cards from you. And just like Nick said, if you'll allow us to, if you put your phone number on there, we'll call you. We'll pray with you. You may say, I don't know what to do next. I don't know, you know, what do I do? Can being a part of Elevate Life Church, what does that mean? This is not membership for you. This is just you saying, I'm making a new decision for Jesus or I'm committing my life to Jesus. And so also we want to encourage you too that after you give the cards, just remember tonight, there's somebody that you know that you said, you know what, I've made this new decision and I, or I have a neighbor, I have a friend. This is Invite a Friend Weekend. We're going to do this again tonight at 6 o'clock and Nick is going to be with us. He's going to have a powerful word. And you know what? The same thing's going to happen. People are going to come forward and people are going to give their life to Jesus. So if you can think of somebody that you say, you know what? I want to invite a friend and I'm going to come back tonight because we just believe this building will be full. And then maybe for some of you, you say, you know, I love his ministry and I love what he does. And I love how he gives hope to people that feel hopeless. And you know what? I want to support him. I want to do this on a monthly basis. You can actually go today to a room. It's our conference room and the ushers will direct you. You can literally fill out a form that says, I'm going to commit to $20. I'm going to commit to $30, whatever that might be. And he would love to meet you. He would love to get a picture with you and take advantage of that time of just saying thank you. And uh, so if you would like to do that, you can do that. And then also we have his product that's available in the back. You've got books and you've got DVDs and, you know, maybe there's somebody that, you know, you know that lives out of town and they weren't able to be here or to hear his story. Go back and get a book or a DVD for them so that they can be encouraged. So anything else? I just want to say I love you so much and a big hug from here. Thank you so much for your prayers, love and support. And if there is anyone in your life that, um, that, that really you've invited to church before and they've said no, Ask them again today and say, hey, look, no matter what you got going on tonight, if you come to church tonight, I'll never invite you back to church. I know that that's pretty, that's pretty bold, right? But some of them actually say, okay, get me off, right? get them off your back. But seriously, they may just meet Jesus today. Um, and please invite as many people as you can, six o'clock tonight. Uh, thank you so much. And I will thank anyone who is moved by God. Uh, to monthly support us. It's the only way that we get to do what we get to do. And, and uh, thank you for being part of the family of Life That Limbs. And uh, we'd love to just quickly take a photo with you, give you a hug, and thank you very much for your support. So thank you, Pastor Sheila, for everything. And, and uh, we really look forward to coming back tonight. Yes, wonderful. Let's give him a big hand. 
We're just going to believe he's going to get into public schools. He's going to come back and be in all of Frisco, McKinney schools. We'll get him in as many schools. Don't you think he needs to come talk to our kids? Absolutely. Well, you know what? Stick your hands up in the air because I'm just going to speak the word of, of God over you. I'm going to speak a blessing over your life like we always do. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. If God be for you, who can be against you? If God be on your side, whom shall you fear? May you be like a tree that's planted by rivers of living water, that your leaf will not wither. And whatsoever you do, say it with me, it shall prosper. God bless you. Have a great week.